<laughs> you may be seated, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. As always, we are thankful to the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We bear witness there is absolutely no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God before him. There is no God besides him. He is God alone, God of all creation. Only the true living God is the true sender and teacher of all true holy prophets and all holy apostles. We've been enjoying ourselves for these three days here in Mandeville, Manchester. That's right. Uh, I'm grateful for all of our brothers and sisters that has been here each night. And I'm glad for all our ministers that are here in Jamaica that are doing a good job keeping the people in remembrance of what God have gave his servants, the apostles. Amen. Well, this is our last go round for this convocation. God willing, we're looking to be back in Jamaica in about four months. In the month of December for the youth conference that is scheduled to be held, God willing, if there's no changes and Montego Bay. So God willing, we're looking to be there and do the same thing like we do here, and that is preach the gospel. The truth of God telecast is the best thing that ever hit this island. Amen. It is all wrapped around with scripture. That's right. No entertainment, all concrete truth. And at a time like this, this is what we all need. Yes. We need exactly what God Almighty have itemized for us to escape the judgment of God that is coming upon the human family. As our brother mentioned, yes, I am extremely tired. When we get back into Philadelphia tomorrow, we're only home for about two days before we get on the road for the men's and women's holy convocation where we will be broadcasting to the world, letting them know the same thing that we're telling you while we're here in Jamaica. Our objective, brothers and sisters, and as I often say on numerous occasions, we don't travel to be paid by people. The offerings and the collections that are taking place, Pastor Jennings don't get a dime from it. I know some find it hard to believe, but I don't. I don't get a dime from it. It goes to the work of the Lord, and we're looking by God's permission to open up a temple here in Mandeville. That way we can constantly pound the devil head. We don't want to just pound the devil head while we're here. We want his head to be pound when we're gone. So after Montego Bay in December, we don't know where we're going to be at on this island next year. I told Gary you, there's plenty of places to be. That's right. Amen. You know, so you, you let me know what you got in mind. And, and God willing, we'll parachute in there with the gospel and gather more souls out of there. Every part of the island where we're going, souls are being gathered who want to walk with the words of God. Amen. When I see young brothers and sisters, especially young men who don't even go to church, they don't want nothing to do with church, but they'll watch the truth of God telecast. Because they see that being a sinner out there in the street, wild and foolish, acting the way the devil wants you to act, like a fool. In order for the devil to loosen his grip on you, you're going to have to have something tough. Something that's stronger than the devil that have you. That's right. I don't believe in sugar water preaching. We believe in that old-fashioned gospel. 
To you that are standing outside, you can come on in. It's quite a bit of you standing out there. Come on in. That way you're in close firing range. <laughs> come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Don't worry about what you got on. Just come on in. Come on in and make yourself comfortable, you young brothers, young sisters, middle aged and old. As I often say, if you're smoking out there, put your cigarette out and come on in. If you're drunk, just let me know. I'll get some brothers to help you come in. <laughs> By the time the truth of God is done with you, it'll sober you up. That's right. Oh, yes, it'll sober you up. Yes. I know I got cigarette suckers here and rum drinkers here. Yeah. I know I got some reefer smokers here. I'm not a fool. You think with all these people in here, everybody's a Christian? No. Who would be that foolish to believe that? That's right. But I'm sent to everybody. That's right. I'm sent to the sheep. And I'm sent to the goat. You judge what class you're in. You judge. <laughs> Don't say, Pastor Jennings, you think I'm a goat? Well, you judge. <laughs> you better judge for that. It is my job and the job of every preacher, not just in Jamaica, but the world, mm -hmm. to bring to you the things of God in the way God have it written. I was watching uh, Mr. Boeing today, the religious hard talk program that was recorded. He had some of our brothers and sisters on the program and, and, I, and I enjoyed it, you know. And uh, it made me see as I listened at the things that he said, it made me see that Mr. Boeing know that this old-fashioned holiness is the right way. Yes, that's true. Some of you may think I'm mean, hateful, despicable, disgusting, and I'm a tyrant. Some say I'm an American crazy man. No, I'm a pretty cool fella. When they just come down to the Bible, I believe what the book says. The question is this. If you're going to come to church, what are you coming for? We're going to have a rap session tonight, Jamaica. And I pray God give me some strength. If you're coming to church, you don't want to go to church because it's Sunday or Saturday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Nor do you want to go to church because you are a choir member. Or you're a musician. The objective of the church that Jesus started was for the correction and the development of the human family. In fact, the church is a correctional facility. <laughs> Are you listening to the old man? Now I'm pretty sure I got some brothers here and maybe some sisters that been some time in their life in a correctional facility, been arrested, been in prison for committing a crime. I got hundreds of men following me that was once in prison. Ex-drug dealers. Men that used to be heavily in drugs, they had their own laboratory. So I have ex-drug dealers. We have ex-gang bangers. I have baptized men that was in the mafia in prison. So God has blessed me to get universal exposure, if you say. Mm -hmm. I've met all kinds. Black Panther Party, Ku Klux Klan, Five percenters, Muslims, Mormons, devils, all kinds. <clears throat> when you go to prison, when you're locked up, 
The objective supposed to be to correct the inmate. It's supposed to be. The prison is supposed to be about what? Reform. Correct? The church is supposed to be a correctional facility. God Almighty is the warden. The preacher is the correction officer. In prison, <coughs> you get out of line, the correction officer get a nightstick. Beat you back in place. I can't get a nightstick or a day stick. But I do have a weapon that will beat us right back in place. It is the word of the Lord. Right. Now, <coughs> the question is, are you ready to be arrested? Are you ready to be arrested tonight? I want to educate you. I want to take my time and soak you. Maybe you can shout by the time I leave. Third chapter of the book of Ephesians. Let us see, do we really want church and before you be quick to say yes I would advise you to know what God church really consists of and then when you hear the rules and the regulations that God set in the church the warden don't set law in the church for negotiation God Almighty don't change nothing for me. Well, you're the man of God. That's all right. He's God. God don't bargain for me. And I can't bargain for you. Third chapter of the book of Ephesians, begin at verse 1. For I want you to follow me and listen real good. For this, co for this cause, I, Paul. For this reason. I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. There's some seats, brother. As they come in, brothers, there's some plenty of seats somewhere around through there. Just go on and get them seated so they can get arrested early. I, Paul, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Hold it. Prisoner. All right. <laughs> he was a new inmate. That's right. You see, before he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ, he was a former prisoner. Mm -hmm. All of us in here, sometime in our life, we were in jail. I don't say, women, Pastor ain't never been locked up. Ain't been that bad. Were you in sin? Yes. Then you were an inmate. And the devil was your warden. That's right. And you done what he told you. The devil said, smoke. You went out and bought you a pack. That's right. The devil said, why don't you get drunk tonight? <clears throat> you call your friends, called you. You went out, couldn't wait the Friday night or Saturday. Party all the weekend. Then went to church smelling like an entire bar. Jumping and shouting with your lottery ticket falling on the floor. God Almighty, he want to arrest everybody in here tonight. But you got to submit to the handcuffs. Now, when somebody know they're a criminal, they run from the law. Many of us here are trying to run from the truth that you hear preached. But you can't hide. I don't care where you run. You can keep your position in your church. You can run from church to church. Nobody in here can outrun God. How can you outrun someone that's everywhere? 
He's higher than heaven. Deeper than hell. Broader than the sea and longer than the earth. The Lord God said, if I cut you off and shut you up, who can stop me? Sometimes parents and preachers use the term, God is trying to get your attention. That's an insult. God never tried to do nothing. He made heaven and earth. When you want your attention, believe me, he know how to get it and get it well. God ain't never tried anything. He's God. When he speak, he make it happen. Now, God warns us in different ways. And his objective of warning us is to give us a clear opportunity to escape the lake of fire. That's some love that he's showing towards the human family. In order for us to escape the lake of fire, we have to come along on God terms. So when someone come along and surrender, that means they're tired of running. It's like a criminal. He run, he run, he duck, he hide, police cars everywhere. He'll live like an animal. Live like a dog hiding in the trash can. Because he's scared of going to jail. Until he get exhausted. Now his face is on television. His face is all on posters. Wanted. Dwayne Thompson. Wanted. Gary Robinson. Wanted. Dan Thompson. Wanted. Steve Williams. Wanted. Ron Skaleski. <laughs> God want all of us. Everybody. Let's get some knowledge. Do you know why you're alive today? You are only alive as an act of mercy from God. They give you time to get connected and on good terms with God. That's the only reason why you're living. You're not alive because you was in the hood gang banging and you, you're so good with your hands you can mix it up. Uh-uh. Many of us were shot. But by God's mercy, you're still living now. Amen. Have you thought why? Some were stabbed, could have bled to death, but you didn't. Have you thought why? Some of us OD'd. That's right. Driving drunk. Could have killed ourselves and someone else didn't. Have you asked yourself why? Amen. It ain't nothing so good, nothing so beautiful, nothing so sharp, nothing so fine about nobody on the earth that got us living. It is by God's mercy and his mercy only that we are sitting here tonight. Amen. That's right. If God choose to take his mercy from us, where do you think he will be? I, Paul, the inmate of Jesus, Christ. of Jesus Christ. I, Paul, the inmate. Now listen, I want to show you and let us find out what to prison and church got in common. Prison is solitary confinement. You got to go when the guards say go. You got to eat whatever the prison give you or die starving. When you don't like the prison, some go on a hunger strike. The warden don't pay you no mind. <laughs> All the inmates still come along eating while you starving to death. And when you die, they bury you in the prison yard. They don't care nothing about your hunger strike. 
in the prison there are rules and regulations and you got to be on good behavior and perhaps that will shorten your sentence good behavior earn you special privileges are you listening good behavior may get you early parole one of the downsides of prison is when a man and a woman becomes what is called institutionalized when you are institutionalized you can't survive outside of those walls because now the same walls that you used to hate now you used to love and you don't know how to survive in another environment and now you become dependent on those walls God Almighty he arrest us through mercy he see you out there dancing and cutting up making the pins in your wig fall off sweating losing your mascara kissing men and smudging up your lipstick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right god almighty see you getting dressed half naked because you're excited about that party that's coming to jamaica a big old outdoor jam session where people is out there by the hundreds just jumping and jumping The everyday events of the world shall be going on when the Lord appear up in heaven. You want God to arrest you now so you can be free of the sentence of death later. Now, when an inmate break out of prison, the searchlight go on. He be ducking behind a wall looking, running from the light. That's the way many of us are. We duck in sin and try to hide it is written on the falsehood as they hid themselves. The word of God said they have made hell the agreement. Can you imagine making an agreement with hell? When you make an agreement with hell, you have made it up in your mind and in your heart you will never serve God you have made a pact with the devil look how arrogant some of these folks are well before I obey God I go to hell first don't rush it take your time it's coming it's coming it is coming oh I ain't scared of hell Pastor Jennings hell ain't all that you ain't nothing but an arrogant self-centered fool if you ain't afraid of hell let's take a break and go outside and gather some wood or some kerosene or gasoline in that spot and light a match let's start a big fire let me see how tough you are in fact, to make it more better, strip off everything and step in the fire. Because when you go to hell, you're going to be there buck naked. Young men, young women, how is it that the devil has made the human family so arrogant that you will downplay or water down the pain of hell? Don't believe what the Jehovah Witnesses tell you. It ain't no hell. I wish that was true. That's right. You gonna wake me up early in the morning just to lie to me? Mm -hmm. Watchtower. Watchtower. Uh, uh, what you wanted? There is no hell. Mm. My God, man, I slammed the door so hard until it hit you right in the face. The Lord says this. If your hand offend you, cut it off. It is better to enter into life maimed than to have two hands to go into hell. 
into the fire that never shall be quenched. That don't mean cut off your regular hand. Cutting off the hand is symbolic because your hand is a valuable member of the body. So what is Jesus teaching us? If there's anything in your life that's so important that you love so great but yet your love for that thing will cause you to be lost. Cut a loose from that thing and be saved without the thing you love or hold on to what you love and let it send you to hell. If thy hand offend thee. Everybody that have a mind mm -hmm. to walk with God, you got to pay a price. Mm -hmm. Anyone that's striving to walk with God now, you are paying a price. Oh, yes. Sometimes that wife get beaten because she want to walk with God now and her husband's still a sinner. And have, if her husband is a sinner and she got a mind to walk with God, she can't go to the party with him no more. Conflict starts in the house. Those mini skirts she used to wear, she can't wear them no more. The pants she used to wear, she can't wear them no more. The makeup she used to wear, she can't wear them no more. The wig she used to have, she's going to throw it out. She can't have a toast of liquor with her husband no more. Why? She agreed to be arrested. That's right. And there's a new law now. That's opposite from the law that she used to live in. When that fella got a mind to be arrested by God, it may affect his relationship with his girlfriend. Are you ready for church tonight? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It may affect your relationship with your girlfriend. She may tell you, honey, I got needs. Mm -hmm. That's right. God got needs too. And you used to be very compliant mm -hmm. with those needs. Apply according to your riches. <laughs> but now. God Almighty done stop you with the word yes. and done arrest you mm -hmm. and said mortify the deeds of your body and then he said flee also fleshy lust yes, that war against the soul that now you got to tell that woman that you love to look at I, I, I can't do it no more what? What's the matter with you? Are you gay now? No, I'm straight. But can't do it no more. For this is the well, way. Since you got in that religion, something wrong with you. That's right. Something's supposed to be wrong with you. That which the Lord have made crooked, said he no man can make straight. When you are naturally arrested, you don't you don't you not have no freedom. No. You're not free. Can't go where you used to go. Can't do the things you used to do. So if Paul is a prisoner of Jesus Christ, ask yourself, have you truly been captured by him? Oh, well, Jesus saved me, but are you captured? Or are you just bragging about a name? Because when you've been captured, there's a form of spiritual bondage. I want to say, well, wait a minute. I thought Jesus come to free you. That's true. He come to free you and bound you. He come to do both. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. He come along to free and to bind. Free you from the will of self. Bind you to his own will. I want to take my time and soak you. Are you ready for church? Glory to God when the policemen arrest me. 
All right, God, he pulls me out of my house. Can't visit your children. Change your clothes. They make you strip. They search your body. You may feel humiliated, but they search it. Then they throw a powder on you. Killing the germ. <laughs> then water you down with a hose. Hmm? Then give you the clothes they want you to wear. <laughs> when a guard said, wake up! Everybody sell open at one time. And if you want to eat, you got to eat with the prison say eat. You can't tell the guard, I don't get up this time of day. I don't get up this time of day. That's too early. I'm used to getting up 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, no. You got to obey orders. If we are a prisoner of Jesus Christ, then our whole body, thank God, got to be arrested by him. That's right. Whole body got to be arrested. When you get a man who don't want to be arrested, he fight. I don't want them cuffs on me. And then the police got to come along and arrest him with him. Why? He don't want to be bound. That's us. We resist arrest. We resist arrest. Sometimes it's hard to resist the devil, isn't it? That's right. Talk back to me. That's right. Sometimes we don't want to resist the devil because he looked too nice. That's right. Sometimes the atmosphere that he creates for us look very appealing, good to the eyes, Amen. soothing. Desires. Pleasant. It look pleasant in your eyes, like the tree in the garden. Desired, sir. Desired. Good for food. Desired. Very desired. Good for food. Good to look at. But the serpent was there. The serpent is always around us. Always. It is written when I would do good. What did Paul say? Evil. That devil was present. When I would could do good, evil. It's praise always present. Evil is always present. Now, if I'm ready for real church, brother, I'm going to go through something because I'm going to have to surrender every part of me to God. Every part. I can't hold on to none of myself. So I hear some people testify. Saints of God, pray for me because I'm on my way to heaven and I'm enjoying the trip. Stop telling that lie. <clears throat> you on your way to heaven? It ain't nobody on their way to heaven in the house. You got some work to do, brother. You got to earn eternal life with God. Do you know it's more easier to go to hell than it is to go back with God? It's, it's very easy. Look how easy it is for us to sin. Even the Bible says, it sin doeth so easily. Easy beset. beset us. Very easy. You can be on the job. Somebody got that worldly music on the radio. Before you know you sitting there with your head covered. <laughs> Singing all the lyrics. Oh, Lord, forgive me. A few minutes later. You forgot all about repentance and everything else. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Some sin, it is easy to be delivered from, to come out of. That's right. And then there's some sin that grip you like a bear trap. What makes it difficult is when your heart loves what you're doing. For Jesus taught us where your treasure is. Your heart there 
will your heart be also. That's right. Heart is where your treasure is. So when your heart is in something, it's more harder to give it up. Because the desire, the want, don't want to give it up. Because your heart is in it. That's why the man become an alcoholic. His heart is in the bottle. One become a crackhead because his heart is in drugs. That's right. It's hard for her to give up that second husband. He got her heart. So will she, will she hear me preach against me marriage and divorce? Old man, you crazy. That man bought me a car. He bought me a house. And we got babies. What am I supposed to do with these babies? He's supposed to be their mother. And he's supposed to be their father. And take care of them. But he can't be your man. Right. Let me tell you something real plain. Nobody is going to make the first resurrection with a second wife or a second husband. Nobody. I don't care what your pastor tell you. You and your pastor will drop in hell. Nobody. That's right. Are you ready for church? Yes. If I'm ready for church, I got to surrender. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We sing that song. I surrender. I surrender. Some sound like a bunch of drunks. I sur Do you surrender? Look at what you're saying. I surrender all. Wait a minute. If you surrender all, why you got stipulations? To serve God, there is no stipulations. It's all or nothing. Amen. Talk to me. That's right. That's God's way. That's God's terms. Amen. All or nothing. Or nothing. That's the difference between God's church and a church a man start. When God have a church, He don't give you no loopholes. In America, if you take a driving test, sometimes the officer that is in the car with you, you know, you got to drive around the cones. You may hit a cone, and originally, if you hit a cone. For to take points off. Sometimes the officers say, well, don't worry about it. He was like, thank God. God ain't doing that. God ain't doing it. Holiness is an obstacle course. Rugged. That's right. Tough. Hard. Brutal. That's right. God ain't looking at how long you've been saved. Because as it stands now, you are saved, but yet you're not. Let me say it again. If you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, you're saved. But yet you're not saved. You're saved from your sins. But uh, when I say you're not saved, you ain't made it back with God yet. So you still are subject to backslide even after you spoke in tongue. I want to say, well, I made it. No, you ain't. You got to strive to get to that strive place. To enter into. Strive to enter. You got to fight to get there. That's right. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. On eternal life. Yes. Right Two. Thou art also called. That's right. I have professed a good profession. Thank God before many witnesses. That's right. The apostles professed a good profession. Amen. This is what we want to encourage, not just Jamaica, but the world to do. When you profess a good profession, that profession is centered around God's law. 
and nothing else. Amen. Some of us are fighting the handcuffs of the spirit. Hmm? We are fighting. Mm -hmm. Spirit want to handcuff you. And you're resisting the rest. Still trying to play that lottery ticket. Still trying to hold on to that six pack of beer. Still trying to hold on to that boyfriend. You're trying. You're resisting the rest. Still trying to hold on to that job that got you making money unlawful. You're resisting the rest. You better get what I'm telling you tonight. Do you hear what the Apostle Paul says? For this cause I, Paul, the For prisoner. this cause I, Paul, the prisoner, the inmate of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. For you Gentiles. For you Gentiles. If you have if you heard of the dispensation, dispensation grace of, of, of the grace, grace of God, God that's given, given to me, to you all. For you all. How that? Here, listen. Paul was made an apostle. Amen. God stopped them on the road to Damascus, old brother Saul. Light shine from heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, when God bring a light to you to bring you out of darkness, that's an act of mercy. Everybody in here be showing mercy tonight. Hallelujah. Everybody. Amen. When God Almighty open our understanding to his will, man, that's mercy. That give me a chance to make the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. But when I say, Lord, I want to go back with you. <coughs> you and your mama may have a conflict. Because your mama may get married the second time and her husband is living. And mama and her new husband may want to come at your house to spend the night. And both of them can't stay. Your mama and her adulterous husband can't stay under the roof of a child of God because you're strengthening the hands of an evil doer. That's right. When you've been arrested and someone comes to you, hey man, you got a light and you got a cigarette, you can't give it to them. Even if you got a pocket full of matches. If you drive a cab here in Jamaica, you drive a cab, and the address that fella give you, you know, is a club. That's money you gotta pass up because you are strengthening the hands of an evil doer. Are you ready for church tonight? These are things that many folks ain't never thought of. Glory to God. If you drive tractor trailer trucks. <laughs> may get a contract with the whiskey company you can't haul liquor you can't haul beer cause the Lord says wine is a marker strong drink is raging he that is deceived thereby is not wise so I can't haul whiskey if you got land you can't grow tobacco when you grow tobacco all you're going to do is sell it so somebody can smoke it and you are strengthening the cigarette industry you can't grow marijuana Are you ready for church? Yes, if you're born again and you're a tailor, 
You can't make pants for women. Why are you stripped in the hands of evil doer? Glory to God. This is that old fashioned holiness. Hallelujah. The word of God say, Love not the world. If you work in politics, you cannot agree to sign no bill that will go into law if that law is in contradiction of anything God said. If they say, well, if you don't vote, you're going to lose your job. I, the Bible said I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No seed big bread. That's right. If Hallelujah. I got to pass up a job to be on good terms Hallelujah. with God, then let it go. That's right. God is first. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This junk these men teach it in churches don't teach you you got to pay a price. When you pay a price, you got to surrender. That's right. If I'm a musician, 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 I can talk about music because I am a musician. I played for over 35 years. I was offered to be a millionaire when I was in my teens, making 24G a year, rather 24G a month. $24,000 a month? Some don't make that in a year. American dollars off me 15 G cash up front. God, all they wanted me to do was play some music so they can kick back in a nice mellow jazz club. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Give your pain some. Let's talk about it. See, I'm a very down to earth, honest man. I don't believe in downplaying nothing. Not that I like jazz, I love it. The style is still in my fingers. I sit at a keyboard today, the same, what's in me gonna come out. That's the only style I know. I sit at an organ, I sit at a grand piano, if it got keys, I can play it. Glory to God. It's hurt trying to do right. <laughs> it hurt, man. I was offered $24,000 a month, and I was only about 16 or 17 or 18 then. And I was in high school, and my music teacher had a friend who was opening up a jazz club, a wealthy club in some part of Jersey. And he saw me playing. I never had lessons. You put music in front of me, I'm dumb. I can't read no music. He asked my teacher, who's that young fella? He said, ah, that's Gino, man. He, he ain't had no lessons. I don't know what is it that he can't play. So he said, your name Gino? I said, yes, sir. I'm playing while he's talking. He said, uh, how long you been playing? I said, well, since I was young. He said, what you do with that talent? Where you play? I said, church. He said, you waste your talent in church? You knew that was the devil talking to me. Yeah, that's right. That was the devil. <laughs> then he gave me an offer. $24,000 a month. He said, I know you may not believe it. But we're opening up a millionaire's club. I say, well, what kind of music are you asking to play? He said, what you're playing right now? Jazz. Oh, glory. <laughs> you see how many bishops try to put themselves so high, like they so great and they ain't got to come up to nothing, like they so perfect and you ain't? I ain't like that. 
I'm like Paul. I'm a man just like you. Amen. I come right down to earth just like you. That's right. Keep it real. Now in my teens, listen, I'm, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. He bringing me that kind of offer, and I was in falsehood then. They had the baptism right, and the Holy Ghost right, and a few other things right, but they couldn't help me to put on the full armor of God. So I went to my father. You know when you want to do wrong, you don't want to hear those scriptures. You know, sometimes you just want to hear somebody's opinion. They may, you may say, what do you think? And they say, well, the Bible said, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I already know what the Bible said. I ask you, what do you think? You think. See, they want some pacification. They want a way out. So I asked my father. He was in his room reading the Bible. I said, Pop. He said, yeah. I said, I was off of 24G a month. He the type of man money ain't phase him at all. He's reading. I said I was offered twenty four G a month. And they offered me fifteen G cash up front. He said, "Done what?" I said, "Playing the piano." I said, "You know the talent the Lord gave me." <laughs> right there, you want to put the Lord in it, you know. That's right. He said, where you uh, asked to play at? I said, oh, club in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Pop, reading his Bible, he looked at me straight in the eyes. He said, son, what do a profit a man to gain the whole world? And lose his soul. That's all he said. And went back, back, right back reading. I was like, you know what? I mean, my pop was the type of man. I mean, I could rap to him. And I told him, I really don't want to hear no Bible right now. I want to act. He said, what do it profit? I'm like, all right. So I had to make a decision. I was young and it was tempting. And that's the way the devil is. He tempt you with what you already love. See, what you don't love or what's not interesting to you, that don't tempt you. That's right. It don't phase you. But when you love something or attracted to something and it gets your attention and you know that God say don't do it, it's become tempting to you. That's right. And this is where the war and the conflict and the argument with self, self takes place. Are you listening? When we become a prisoner, it affects our jobs. If I'm a barber, If I'm in a barbershop and that woman come in, um, I, I would like to get my ends clipped and get a shape up around the side and clip the top. And you know in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians is against cutting that woman hair. You can't tell her, take a seat please. You got to tell her, I, I, I don't cut women hair. Well, I offer you 50 or 100 American dollars. You can't say, oh, well, mm. don't ever let money cause you to bargain with your soul. Amen. Never. Amen. When money calls us to bargain with our soul, then we have potential to be a sellout. And when it comes to God, you don't want to sell God out at all. No. 
The struggle make it hard, but stay in the fight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Whatever you weak to, yes. stay in the fight. That's right. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Are you listening? That's right. Glory to God. You better be careful. If I work in a clothing store. Are you ready for church, brothers and sisters? Preach, preach your word. Preach your word. You work in a clothing store? You can't give that woman her pants to try on. The Lord says, touch not. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you work in a food market, mm -hmm. you have the business stocking the whiskey and stocking the beer mm -hmm. and carrying the carts of cigarettes. That's right. The Lord says, touch not. I ain't got some of you look so sad. <laughs> the devil will make you think, Pastor Jennings, you're ridiculous. You went too far. They can't do that in your church. Pastor Jennings did not write the Bible. If the Lord says love not the world, you know, neither the things, things that are in the, the world, world, then don't you try to indict me as if I the one made it up. That's right. It's either God's way uh -huh. or no way. Hallelujah. That's right. If you work in a hat store. Hat store. Yeah. When that woman come to you, I'm looking for a long wig, at least about six inches long, with some curls up at the top. Can you show me? Can you help me try this wig on? And the Lord said, "I hate every false way." That's right. Didn't he say so? That's right. No wigs. No fake fingernails. Child of God have no business in a store getting fingernail designing and toenail designing. Right. Love not the world, neither, neither the things. things that are in the world. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's right. That's old-fashioned holiness. Yep. This modern Christian trash that you're painting up looking like Jezebel that your preacher used to preach against. That's right. Used to. Used, used to. Used to. Not anymore. The old preachers used to tell the women, don't look like Jezebel. That's right. But now the old preachers, his own wife, look like Jezebel. Amen. Amen. Am I right? Yes, right. Some Amen. of these preachers' wives, you can't tell her from a neighborhood whore. That's right. This old-fashioned preaching, the devil is very smart. He have worked relentlessly to push that stuff out the church and blind you with excitement and entertainment with praise dancers and all that foolishness God been kicked out the church the center of church now is money that's why the sinner have no respect for church amen. talk to me amen come on that's right come on and you can't blame them. No. Pastor Jennings, I've been trying to get my brother in the church for years. What kind of church you trying to get him to go to? Uh -huh. Are you listening? That's right. Are you ready for church family? Hallelujah. That's right. Who know in the judgment of God? 
Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. You sure you're ready for church? Come on. Many people that watch us in Jamaica by the thousands act like I'm preaching something new. Come on. A lot of things I'm preaching, you was raised up for when you was a child. Amen. But isn't it strange now how some of our mothers was telling us this, and now when they got old, they trying to be young. That's right. That's so true. So true. You see how backward things got? Yes. Things got backward. Changing the truth of God. Many was coming up, the mothers would tell you, get that dress down. Yes. If you step out of my house with that mini skirt. Yes, sir. Years ago, the old mothers would tell the young sister, why you ain't got your hair covered. That's right. Get off that choir bareheaded. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I right? Yes, right. Amen. Old mother see that single girl up there singing with all them passion marks on her neck. That old mother will come up, take her right off the choir. Uh, you, you better sit down till you get yourself together. Come on. The churches have went so far backward. Pulpit and the people, when it come to God, the attitude is, I don't care. Yes. Mm. I don't care. So they say, that's Pastor Jenner's teaching. That's Pastor Jenner's church. To water it down. Pastor Jenner's this. Pat, listen, I didn't write the Bible. Left up to me, I wouldn't care what you wore, what you done. I wouldn't care. Why should I? But glory to God because of God. They want to put it on me. That's the way the old churches were. Mm -hmm. You sang a spiritual holy song, you sung it. You wasn't singing and trying to do dance steps at the same time. That's the way all holiness was. Spiritual songs and hymns. Old, old holiness women wasn't allowed to wear mini skirts. Showing your thighs. Having choir rehearsal with pants on. Breasts hanging out. Back out. The preachers don't even mention Jezebel no more. Because Jezebel is a member of their church. Jezebel is in church. That's right. That's right. First lady. <laughs> oh God. Jezebel is the first lady. Sir. Jezebel is a member of the church. First lady. Glory to God. First lady. <laughs> and there, the preachers and the churches in Jamaica is troubled. Yes. About the truth of God. Yes. Because it's pulling the island. Oh, yeah. Back to God. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. done dropped the anchor Hallelujah. down in Jamaica. Yes. And we're pulling it. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Come back. To Religion God. is trying to rebuttal. That's right. But God said, no, God. son. Come, Come back unto God. me. That's right. Said he all you that labor. That's right. I'll and I'll give you labor. And I'll give you rest. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. And learn. Learn it. Glory to God. Learn it. He wants you to learn. Yes. Learning now, sir. Learning. Glory to God. People learning. People you're learning. going to church jumping, but you're not learning nothing. That's right. That's why God says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's right. Hallelujah. Teach all nations. That's right. Ye that believe it. That's why I'm here. Glory to God. God sent me here to teach the entire island. That's right. Not some of it, but all of it. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. All of it. That's right. Wonderful. Wonderful. It makes the old people look at themselves. Yes, Hallelujah. And it makes the young people now question the old people yes. and ask them, why aren't you telling me what you used to tell me when I was a child? That's right. Old mothers ain't wore ankle chains years ago. Think of it. If you didn't wear it when you was 20, why are you 70 wearing one? That's right. <laughs> Come on. 
you didn't wear when you was 25, why are you 65 with one? Them old time mothers made it their business to be an example yes. to these young women. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to be old mothers today. We're trying to keep up That's right. with the young women. So we become ashamed of our God given gray. Mm. And we dye our hair. Look at these so called Christians. Dye their hair black, orange, yellow, blue. Whoever thought you would see a day where you'll see men on a choir with a rubber band wrapped around their hair with a ponytail like women? That's right. Mm. It ain't nothing wrong with me. Or they got something's wrong with them. That's right. That's the problem. Hmm? When you're truly a prisoner and you have a marriage in your church, you can't be singing no worldly love song. And you claim you're born again? The word of God says old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Bob Marley music have no business in the marriage of the church. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Do you hear this? Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus chapter 9. And Ecclesiasticus at verse or the book of Sarich. Chapter what? 9 and at verse 12. Chapter 9 and verse 12 says what? Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Now, I don't know whether they do it here, but the weddings in America, many of them, the woman have a garter, they call it. Something she wear on her leg, on her thigh. Do you know what I'm talking about? And what she would do is throw it to men. And whatever man catch it, her husband's not in the group. Whatever man catch it, he come Get on his knees while this newly bride is sitting in a chair with her legs crossed. This is in church. Pull her dress up over her knee. So now a man is sliding this girdle, this girdle up. And you'll find a photographer and all the other men right around this newlywed. Keep going. Keep going, man. You almost there? Keep, and the camera is all up her dress. Just got married and you already acting like a hoe. Just got married. Another man got your leg already. You see why they hate old man Jennings? That's right. The reason why I can preach like this, I'm not on no payroll. I wasn't elected by a board of directors. The church didn't make me a preacher. God made me a preacher and he only is the one I report to. I'm not controlled by America. I'm not controlled by Washington. Barack don't control me. Congress don't dictate me. God dictates me. Amen. You got to be a prisoner. Right. Hmm? Hallelujah. Are you listening? Right. Glory to God. So, if my daughter was married, not that she is, none of my children are married yet, thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but if my daughter was married, and then her marriage didn't work, she can't go talking to a second man and ask me for counsel for a second marriage. Mm -mm. And if she, God forbid, become disobedient and go out on her own and get married anyway, there's no need to send me an invitation. I can't go. 
Your mama can't go. Your brothers and sisters can't go. Nor can we buy you a gift. Who know the judgment of God? Hold it. Can't buy you a gift. Nor can I congratulate you. That's right. Someone said, what? Oh, yes. Someone got a second husband and got a second wife. How can you say congratulations? That's like saying happy adultery. That's right. That's right. Happy adultery. Have an adulterous good time. I wish you all the luck in the world. All you're doing is commending and condoning their adultery. If you go to a church and your pastor perform marriages of men and women in this congregation and you know that they still, their husband is still alive and their wives are still alive, you in the devil's church that condone adultery and don't you lie and ever say again your pastor been preaching an unadulterated gospel. You's a liar. He's a pimp. That's right. Your pastor is a pimp. <laughs> yes, sir. He's a backward collar, cross wearing, slick head pimp. Yes, he is. That's right. Pimping around. He's pimping the church. Pimping around. There should not be an adulterous marriage taking place in God's church. And here's the Lord say, they which do such things are worthy of death. The Lord said it. That's right. Amen. If you have a reception after your wedding, glory to God. All right. That's it. If you have a reception after your wedding, the music has to be spiritual songs. The conduct must be holy. You ain't drinking a toast of liquor. No. So I'm going to say, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings, I got you now. Because the Bible says uh, Jesus turned water into wine at the marriage of Canaan. That's right. But where did he drink it? <laughs> that's right come on he turned water into wine as a miracle he don't read where he drank it why are you having a wedding and you baptized and have the Holy Ghost and you're both toasting champagne the Bible speak against that strong drink and yet you're speaking in tongue with all them bubbles in your mouth If you got a wedding gown, no deep cut necks, no deep cut backs. Your naked back should not be exposed in the church and in the public. Your breast is for your husband, not for the street. Cover that stuff up. Amen. And then you got the nerve to claim you were insulted because a man looking at you. Mm. And you're going to cut your eye at him. Mm-hmm. No, you should have done all that before you left home. That's right. The nature of a man is to look at the woman. That's his nature. You standing next to him clapping and something cut down the hair showing your cleavage. And you up clapping and everything clapping. That's his nature. All of a sudden, he gonna get up right with you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. Am I right, folks? Yes. Talk to me. Yes. He ain't got no Holy Ghost, but he's busy. Oh yeah. Looking at you. Don't be a fool. Even the sinner know I'm telling the truth. Yes, that's right. The sinner know it. There's more negative women in church almost than it is in the street. Years ago, you would never see it. What happened? What happened? 
pastor's wives press all out pastor's wives split from the ankle to the hip pastor's wife got a thigh all exposed and up in church jumping kicking her legs out showing everything she's born with no shame it ain't no shame in the churches that's why they think something is wrong with me why you ain't ashamed to show your chest why you ain't ashamed to show your behind in public? Yeah. Why you ain't ashamed to show your womb in public? Yeah. How can you sit in the presence of men and you a woman one leg east and one leg west? No shame. And you ain't got no shame? If you're not a hoe, don't act like one. All right. Amen. When you come back to old-fashioned holiness, Yes. There's some shame. Yes. Yes. Cover up the shame. My yes. God, shame left the people of God. Yes. If the preacher not ashamed, then he's not going to preach shame. The word of God talking about shame facedness with sobriety. Yes. 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 Shame facedness with sobriety you're not flirtatious on the job why prisoner mm -hmm. you a prisoner and you're born again trying to walk with God and you get married you can't accept the wedding band because the Bible speaks against the wearing of gold. Yes, said so. Pastor Jenny, you ain't got no ring? No. How do people know you married? Act like it. Come on. A ring ain't made you faithful. No. A ring ain't made you stop winking your eye. That's right. You ought to take the ring and put it in your sock. <laughs> Bible speaks against the wearing of gold. That's the right. Bible speaks against finger rings, yes. nose jewels, That's right. tinkling around the ordinance of the leg is speak against bracelets right, yeah. chains right. god people is a modest people yes. hallelujah no man of god should be standing up here with all these diamond rings sparkling everywhere right. good men are not like that no yeah. hallelujah to a man of god knew the bracelet on mm -hmm. if you were a bracelet for medical reasons that's something different yeah. but here you just got it on for show yeah. that's right what do a preacher need with his hair straightened? His hair jerry curl. His hair slicked back like an oily back dog. You men, you've been around women so much you want to be like them. Why would a man arch his eyebrows? Well, I got a unibrow. God put it there, leave it there. A grown man in the mirror. <laughs> What's the matter with you? That's right. Come on. A real man is masculine. Yes. yes sir. A real man ain't worried about manicured nails. No. A real man ain't worried about how much calluses is on his hand. No. There's too much sugar in the churches. We preach salt. For Jesus said, salt is good. Didn't he say so? Yes, sir. He says so. Come on, son. That's right. Back in Ephesians. Chapter 3, verse 1. For this, for I because call I call the prisoner of Jesus Christ. The prisoner of Jesus Christ. For you Gentiles. For you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Which is given to me for you. How that. How that by revelation. He made known unto me. He made known unto the apostle Paul the mystery. The mystery as I wrote. A four in few day in few words. In few words. Mm -hmm. That whereby, whereby when he read, when you read, he may understand my knowledge. My knowledge he may understand in, mm -hmm. my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. I'm glad God gave me revelation. God has sent us to the world to put everything in order. The preachers can say whatever they want about Pastor Jennings. I know my calling. Yes. And the Apostle Paul said, I magnify my office. Yes. Wonderful. 
This position was given to me from God, not by the board of directors. Never been to Bible school since I've been born and don't plan on to. I was, Hallelujah. I was made a preacher. Wonderful. Being made a preacher, I cannot be bought. You can't offer me nothing that'll turn me from God. Nothing, I said. I'm not a sellout. Wonderful. Brothers and sisters of Jamaica and you that are watching around the world, stop selling out on God. Amen. Stop compromising for your church. Amen. Stop agreeing with your pastor when you know he's wrong. Amen. If he's wrong, I don't care how much you love him. Say he's wrong. Yes. That's right. Amen. Am I right? Amen. If your pastor got a second wife, just admit he's living in adultery. Yes. I don't care if he's your husband. Right. I don't care if he's your father. If your father don't want to give up his second wife, leave his church. Amen. Amen. My God, I want to get you to see God. Keep your eyes on God. And your body shall be full of life. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters.